In last episode, we discussed how to read the speaker's off-axis response measurement result. Now let's take a look at how it is measured such as this BNW800 2D3 horizontal plot, and what this might affect the sound in your listening room. First, the on-axis measurement is done at the tweeter level as we discussed in last episode. Here is showing it as the red line along with two yellow lines. Based on the MLS testing method, the on-axis measurement is done with multiple measurements, from 30 degrees horizontal window, and average the results for the on-axis frequency response plot. The horizontal response plot is based on all the measurements, from left to right as showed as off-axis, from negative 90 degree on the left, to the center as on-axis, or zero degree, then to 90 degree on the right. On the back of the speakers, it is dominated with low frequency base as it is omnidirectional. Now, if we put the speaker straight out as this drawing shows, you will be hearing from the speaker's off-axis sound as a direct sound, when you're sitting in the normal listening position. Even if we consider the plus minus 30 degrees as listening window from the speakers, you still need to be sitting further away from the speakers. In case your speaker's on-axis sound is too bright, such as the high-frequency response has a hump as the B and W800 2D3 speakers, you might want to put your speaker straight out as the off-axis frequency response tends to be dipping on both mid-range and upper range. But some speakers like this 802D3 could still have peaks around upper mid-range in its off-axis, as it is showed on the horizontal response measurements. Now you can turn your speaker's angles to face to your listening location for toe and positions. This will help you to cherry-pick the speaker's horizontal response curve along with your listening room reaction to balance the in-room sound effect. Remember, this horizontal response plot is a normalized plot, as we explained in the first episode. So for other speakers' models, you will need to pay attention on how to read it correctly. Your room reaction for the speaker's frequency response is very complex phenomenon. There's direct sound waves coming from the speaker's on-axis sound. There is first reflection sound waves coming from your room boundaries. First reflection sound wave is a critical factor for the sound quality and musicality. The on-axis sound within the plus minus 15 degrees of the speakers can be reflected from your rear wall behind your head. The side walls will reflect the speaker's off-axis sound waves. There is also the second reflection that bounces twice from your room boundaries. The room size and your speaker's placement will affect the delay time for these reflections. This is actually the major reason why each speaker's can sound very differently in different listening room. We will discuss more on this topic in future episode. Since every room will react on each speaker's model differently, your speaker's placement and toe and angles are very critical to achieve the best sound stage and sound imaging. Using the stereo test tone to help you to optimize your speaker's placement is the most efficient way to do so. You can find more detail on this from my other video.